Morning all. Another bunch of kits are coming in. We're still rocking with a lot of stuff coming through, so uh, keep an eye on our website and everything else and, and come and visit us. We've still got a lot of this. It's more and more is appearing on the shelves as we get more and more sorted out. So let's have a look at some new stuff that's just come in. In the last few days, we have had shipments from UM, Ace, uh, all those sort of things. So we'll show you a few that have come through. This is the this is all 70 second scale armor. So uh, that makes it simple for you, for you guys. Uh, this is the um, M4 HVS. This is the tank thrower version. This is a series that UM have been doing of Sherman. So this is another one in the series. Uh, again, if you know the kits, they're quite good. Um, the uh, Plastic is quite good, they do a nice sort of stuff. These ones do, however, need to have some of the track assembled. Uh, so they're in plastic, so you do need to do a little bit of assembly. There's also a bit of extra metal in them as well. So just keep an eye on that, because you'll need to work through that. But, so that's that one. We've all, this one's a Panzer IV J released. This is again from UM. And this is also from UM. This is a Jag Panzer IV, again. Again, nice kits. They're doing some nice stuff. These guys are doing more and more. Another one from UMT, which is an, a sort of another brand, but they use UM as, an, as a code. This is the uh, BT2 with uh, experimental turret on it. So if you're looking for that unusual one, this is another 70 second scale one. So uh, there you go. So there's that one. Uh, from Ace Models, we've got a few new ones. These are all, uh, Ace Models do some nice stuff. Uh, kits are quite good, uh, details very good. Um, they do a lot of unusual bits and pieces, so uh, uh, if you're a 70 second scale armor model, there's quite a bit in this range. So this is your um, diesel version of the 2.5 ton 6x6. So there's that one. We've got the French EBR 75. We've got the 4x4 Unimog for long range patrol missions, the Jack, the JCAM. So that's pretty good. As I said, these are all really nice kits. This is a German Pax 7.62 centimeter. Uh, we've got the 60 millimeter mortar carriage, uh, the French AML 60. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what have we got here? Three ton German car ugh, cargo truck with the soft cap. So this is the G917T. So that's quite good. And then last but not least from them new is the 3.7 centimeter German flak gun, flak 36. So there you go. So for our 70 second scale modelers, we have got quite a bit more in and we've got a lot of restock of this stuff as well. Hi guys, got another bunch of, another brand to show you. This is the KP series of kits. Uh, these guys are really moving forward. There's a lot of new kits they're going to be doing. There's a lot of new uh, updated kits and there's a lot of new, um, a couple of new 48 scale kits too. So let's have a look at what we've got. First up, if you're looking to do early Mark Spitfires, we have the first four. This is the Mark One with the Watts prop. So this has got the flat canopy and the two bladed prop. This is all, this is all in 70 second scale. And there's your choices of marking. So there's a couple of famous one, 19 Squadron and a, and a couple of the others there. So that's, if as I said, if you're looking to do early Spitfires, these are the ones to do. This is Spitfire Mark 1A, the black and white series. This one's got the black and white uh, under, under surfaces. Again, a couple of famous ones in there as well. So the usual suspects. So again, quite nice. This one is Commander's Aircraft. So this will be, um, this is all Mark 1As again. So what have we got here? You've got, um, uh, what have we got? Squadron leader Rupert Lay, Lee, um, Brian Lane, and Alan Deere. So there's quite a number of uh, famous commanders from the from the Battle of Britain series or era. So that's quite nice. And then to top it all off, you've got the first of the three bladed props, Mark One A's, and in this one you've got. The, uh, the bubble canopies, again, black and white underneath, but it's different color schemes again. 
uh, for the three-bladed prop version, so that's quite nice. KP seem to like things in series and they give them all to you as soon as possible. This is the new Hawker Tempest F6. So this is the um, over Egypt, so we've got this one and you get a number of choices of marking. This has got the late war roundels and things like that, grey underneath, so quite nice, very well done. This one is F6, doesn't actually say anything special, so I presume it's just basic ones. So there's the basic colour schemes again. This one looks like a post-war one, these two are wartime ones, so nice colour schemes again, good choices. And then finally you've got the Silver, Silver Wings Tempests, my F6s, so again all post-war, uh, various serving places and things like that so that's all the silver series so these guys are doing a heap more tempest it'll be interesting to see if they continue on to do uh other versions and late war and, and you know other, maybe even get into sea furies and all that who knows but um the kits of themselves are very nice the reviews i've read so far and the, and the plastic that i've looked at has been very very good so if you're looking to continue your tempest series grab hold of these uh, a couple of World War One for you ones here. We've got the Faust D2 uh, Hellfish and the Faust D2A Hellfish. Um, their World War One stuff has been very, very popular. We've uh, basically sold out of things like dolphins and stuff like that. So this is very, very nice. So these are quite nice. These are schemes. A couple of interesting ones. A couple of the usual suspects as well. Nice blue one there. So uh, again, for our 70 second scale World War One modelers, you're being treated to some really, really nice stuff and I reckon that there's gonna be more surprises this year. So there's that. Now, if you're looking for Alpha Jets and you think you don't have enough, have we got a stack for you? I'll do this like I did the 109s. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, now they're all generally, there's A's and E's. Uh, yep, there's A's, E's, these are all A's and E's. Essentially it's just uh, A or an E, but it's the colour scheme that, sort of, what's it? that's the Quintic, so this is the, a couple of the fancy colour schemes that are on a couple of them. So there's that one. This one is Internationals. So you've got various colour schemes there. I think that's Portuguese. Uh, I think that's, well that's Gabon or something, right? Belgian. Belgian, so there's Belgian. So there's that one. This one is Bundesluftwaffe. So this is all German ones. Of course the Germans fly these things. This one's fitted with cannons and things underneath. So that's pretty cool. Um, this is in French service. Obviously the main guys that fly these things. The nice colour scheme with the fancy tail there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this one is over Africa. So this will be Moroccan. Moroccan there. This one is um, Egyptian. Egyptian. And this one Nigerian. is Nigerian. So there's those. And then last but not least in this block of series, this one is the Canadian Top Aces. So I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but um, I didn't know the Canadians were flying them, to be honest. But there you go. So that's a nice little group. So if you're looking to do some Alpha Jets and you want to do a collection of them, there you go. So that's pretty cool. We also have Alouettes. Now this is Hellas. Alouette that they've reboxed and reissued. So this is uh, this was always a nice kit, but hasn't been around quite some time with um, with from Hella. So this is the international one. This is over Europe. The international one gives us four schemes. There's um, looks like Belgian and German and there's um, uh, what do you call Portugal? Portugal again. And so, Romania. And Romania. So there you go. There's a couple of good ones there. And then this one is uh, Irish, French, uh, I think that's Holland. Holland, Dutch. And that's um, Hungarian, I think. Austrian. Austrian. So there you go. So I must learn all my different coloured flags as, as um, Sheldon does. So there you go. So there you go. So that's another type. If you've been chasing an Alouette, obviously Australia flew this version as well. So, But they haven't done the Australian markings. Will they do it in the future? It's possible, but um, if you just want to get some new alouettes or do an alouette, there you go. So there's those. Now, interesting one. This is 48 scale. This is also from KP. This is in 48, the Westland Gazelle AH1. Yes, it's not a bad kit. Uh, I think again too, it's the older French kit, which I thought was actually 150 scale, but they're showing it as 148 scale. So 
a bit close to whatever they decide. However, the interesting thing about this one, there's four choices of markings. You've got the desert one, which is a British Army one, a UN one, another British Army one, and an Irish one. The interesting one about this is, there's a red rat. Even though Australia never actually had these things, apparently the story I read was that it was being flown in Britain uh, by a pilot, trainee pilot, or pilot in uh, exchange service and everything else, and somehow or other he managed to get a red rat roundel or uh, Australian roundels put on to his uh, helicopter he was flying around in. So there you go. So if you're looking for something different to get a bit of a conversation piece going, there you go. Quite interesting. Last but not least, we'll have a look at the latest from RS models. Now this is all 70 second scale. Now these all have been out before, but they've reissued them with new markings and things like that. So this is the Henschel HS123A. Choices of markings. A couple of interesting ones on there. Uh, I think there's, that's the second one. This is the B model. So again, choices of markings on there. Even a Japanese one. Uh, Russian one, so a bit of a uh, bit of licensing there being messed around with. There's an American one on there, but uh, so that's that. Then this is the Booker BU133. This kit has always been a nice kit from them. Very little, nice little pretty aeroplane too. So uh, that gives you both versions. So you've got the the inline engine or the radial engine. So you can have either one of those. So that's pretty cool. And last but not least, we've got the DFS. 230 glider this has been reissued again this is about the fourth time they've reissued it it's very popular so uh, if you haven't had one before and you want to do it it's just got new decal variants so there you go so let's see what they've done so there you go there's your other choices of markings another one we're going to have a look at we're going to look at some ships at the moment so just in from ihp we've got two new releases we've got hms vulnerable and hms vengeance these are both in 70 seconds oh, sorry wrong both in 700 scale, 76 scale would be awesome. Uh, 700 scale. These are these require work. These are not um, kits that you can just throw together. They're li not quite limited run, but they're very hard. They don't they don't make great rain runs of them and things like that. So you're going to pay a few bucks for them. We obviously haven't seen this type of ship before, but um, they're very very nice. The kits themselves uh, go together well. There's a lot in them, as you can see, but. There's your hulls, there's your deck, and they come with a few a few aircraft as well to go on it. You can buy extra aircraft if you want. So Vengeance is one of the ships that Australia was uh, leased for a while until we got um, Melbourne and Sydney, uh, of which we will be getting the Colossus class ship in uh, probably the next uh, month or so. And then we should uh, you'll be able to do uh, the Colossus, Sydney and Melbourne, and the uh, that's other series. Then we just don't know yet. Maybe one day. So there's those two. From Micromere, we've got. Now I hadn't heard much about these because apparently they're fairly secret anyway. But this is the uh, Sea Line. Now this is a an attack boat type of thing for surveillance and all sorts of other things and everything else. Apparently it can be semi-submersible so they're using it mostly for dropping off SEAL teams and things like that so very unusual. It's in uh, three, uh, 1144 scale. Not a lot in it to do but as an unusual boat it's, um, it's quite interesting so it has all the uh, bits and pieces there. Not a lot to do it but just look very interesting so it's one of the uh, stealth type series of boats that the US Navy were playing around with the Israelis apparently use it quite a bit and a couple of submarines this one uh, we have had this one before but it's been a while since we've had it in again so this is the K-15 from World War One so this is uh, very very nice um, great kit apparently it builds very very well from the couple of customers I've known that have bought it and built it so they've been very happy with it and the latest one from them is uh, the British M class submarine don't know a lot about these ones but it's obviously either just post World War two or just after World War two or something rather um, very very nice it's uh, got an interesting paint scheme on it but um, there you go a little bit of etched metal in there as well for the details so it's very very good so yeah nice little little unit I'm not sure uh, actually no I was wrong it's not post war it's pre uh, post World War one so it's 19. 1919 so um so there you go 
another one, old one for the collection if you're looking to do submarines. So there's that one. And the other one, just for something a bit different, this is done by a company called Garbuzz. Uh, Garbuzz, yeah. This is a, uh, this 70 second scale Seagull. So very, very nice little unit. This is uh, one of like the Viking type ships. Um, it's basically, it was, uh, uh, it's done by the uh, Ukrainian Cossacks, and this is based on an actual ship they've found uh, buried away. So, um, very nice if you're looking for something different. It is in 70 second scale, so there you go. That's what we've had for you. Have a great day. We'll talk to you again soon. There's lots more new stuff coming in, which we're expecting over the next uh, few weeks. So keep an eye out, subscribe to our thing, but also please still remember, we're still struggling to get um, stock into the stores and things like that. So be patient. If there's something you really want, jump online, order it. We'll get it into the store, get it to you, or you'll get it out to you, uh, get it posted out to you. Have a great day. Talk to you again soon. See you later. Bye.